brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. In all the news about Bishop Strickland in the past few days, a truly bizarre story was overlooked by nearly everyone. We know that the secular world has a range of opinions about the Catholic Church that go from one end of the spectrum from indifference to, on the other end, open hostility. When the Church is attacked, we expect it to be because of past sins involving Ted McCarrick-type priests or because of the moral teachings of the Church and how unpopular they are with the broader world. If a Protestant attacks the Catholic Church, we expect it to be because of the Church's historical assertion that she was founded by Christ himself on the rock of Peter, and that all the problems in the Church today are due to Satan focusing his ire on the Church because it is authentically the Church of Christ, and that the problems of the world are because of the rejection of the Gospel as taught by the Catholic Church. We don't expect someone to attack the church using fraudulent, selfish reasons, except for in the cases when petty crimes are committed against the property of the church. This happens often enough that it is barely worth talking about when it in fact does happen. Today I have a different kind of story for you, one that involves the church being defrauded for personal gain in a way that is both bizarre and frankly stupid on the part of the alleged perpetrators in this story. And I say alleged because the official legal investigation is ongoing, although it does appear that it's entering the settlement phase, which is interesting in and of itself. So if there's a major update, I'll follow up. But it, the process seems to be going, and it's not quite complete yet. Anyway, our story takes us to People Magazine's website of all places. You know, honestly, I never thought I'd be quoting People Magazine on this channel, but here we are. Headline, California restaurant find $140,000 for infractions, including hiring fake priests to hear workers' confessions. The owners of Taqueria Garibaldi used a phony clergyman to interrogate employees about their workplace sins. As you'll surmise from this story, many, if not most, of the employees are Latinos, and the employee or the employer tried to intimidate them using both the faith and, frankly, threats about their status in America for some pretty petty reasons and so doing tarnished the image of the church in the eyes of the employees, at least temporarily, until they figured out what was really going on. From the People Magazine article, quote, The Department of Labor has ordered a taqueria chain in California to pay a total of $140,000 in back wages and damages to 35 employees after business owners committed a number of infractions, the oddest of all including hiring a fake priest to extract confessions of sins from employees. Taqueria Garibaldi, a restaurant with a location in Sacramento and Roseville, was at the center of the controversy. Che Garibaldi Incorporated and its owners and operators Eduardo Hernandez, Hector Manuel Martinez Galindo, and Alejandro Rodriguez agreed to a consent judgment in the case, which was ruled upon by Judge William B. Shubb from the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of California on May 8th. In addition to the $140,000, the individuals were fined $5,000 in civil penalties due to the willful nature of the violations, end quote. It also appears the Department of Labor is going to be looking into this, which is why I say it's ongoing. But anyway, the article goes on to describe the nature of charges the employer is facing. The employer threatened the employees with their legal status and related documentation. They denied overtime pay to employees illegally. The employer stole tips from employees and gave them to management and documentation threats were made against people who complied with investigators from the U.S. Department of Labor. Really, when the feds are involved, going against them in this kind of thing is just profoundly dumb. It really is. Now, personally, if this all turns out to be true, then the employer should go to jail. On this channel, I often talk about a certain sin that cries out to heaven for justice. It's a sin that we associate with Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church. But there are other sins that cry out to heaven for justice, too. And among them is the sin of denying a working person their wages. Stealing tips from employees absolutely falls under this category of sin. The church has had a constant teaching on this going back to antiquity. I mean, it's in the Bible, pretty plainly in the Bible. But this article from Catholic Answers tells us about the nature of this sin. Quote, The fathers of the church implicitly asserted that the right of the laborer to sufficient compensation for the maintenance of his life when they declared that God wished the earth to be common heritage of all men, and when they denounced as robbers the rich who refused to share their surplus goods with the needy. The theologians and canonists of the Middle Ages held that all commodities should be sold at that price 
which the social estimate regarded as just, but they insisted that in arriving at this estimate, the community ought to take into account the utility, the scarcity, and the cost of production of the commodity. Inasmuch as the cost of production at that time was chiefly labor cost, or wages, a just price for goods would necessarily include a just price for the labor that produced the goods. St. Thomas reflects the common view when he says that labor as well as goods should bring a just price. See Summa Theologica, Book 1 to 2, etc. <laughs> End quote. The biblical root for this, by the way, is found in the book of Deuteronomy, which says that a man is to be paid his wages each day and not to neglect paying a man his wages, lest a man cry out to the Lord for justice. And, of course, we can interpret that in modern times to be pay your employees when you say you're going to pay them. But anyway, the Catholic position is that people should be given a just wage for their labor. What that means in a modern economy can be hotly debated. I'm sure there's opinions all across the board on what that actually means. But I think it shouldn't be controversial to say that stealing tips from serving and kitchen staff at a restaurant is probably going to be seen as a violation of that. I don't know if the employer is Catholic or not, but I suspect that they are either Catholic or they have formally apostatized and were at one time practicing Catholics because of this next part of the article. So back to the original news article we go, because it's such a weird story. Quote, As for the claim that the restaurant offered a supposed priest to hear confessionals during work hours, that was surfaced by a Taqueria Garibaldi employee who testified under oath that the priest urged worker to, quote, get the sins out that only had to do with their employment. As soon as the confession started, I found the conversation to be strange and unlike normal confessions, where I would tell a priest about the sins I wanted to confess, testified Maria Prada in a sworn declaration obtained by the Los Angeles Times. He asked if I ever got pulled over for speeding, if I drank alcohol, or if I had stolen anything. The priest mostly had work-related questions, which I thought was strange. The priest asked if I had stolen anything at work, if I was late to my employment, if I did anything to harm my employer, and if I had any bad intentions towards my employment. The fake priest had no affiliation with the Catholic Diocese of Sacramento, authorities said. Our own investigation found no evidence of any connection between the Diocese of Sacramento and the alleged priest in this matter. Brian J. Visitacion, Director of Media and Communications for the Diocese of Sacramento, told the Catholic News Agency last week. While we don't know who the person in question was, we are completely confident he was not a priest of the Diocese of Sacramento. End quote. The one thing the various articles about this fail to mention is that the person pretending to be a priest is almost certainly committing a felony. I say almost certainly because unless the person acting as a priest in this story is a laicized priest, meaning a former priest, which given how many of them there are out there these days, that is actually a distinct possibility. But unless that's the case, then the person doing this is in person is impersonating a priest and committing a felony. And even then, even if they were laicized, that might still be considered a felony since they're not an active priest. The laws about this read a little differently in each state, but they tend all to function like the example. Here, which does not come from California, but is the most succinct version I found. Whoever being in a public place fraudulently pretends by garb or outward array to be a minister of any religion or nun, priest, rabbi, or other member of the clergy is guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction shall be punished by a fine not exceeding $500 or confinement in the county jail for not more than one year or by such fine and imprisonment. Now this, of course, will become part of it becomes elevated to a felony when you, of course, make impersonated clergy as part of a larger crime. Now, in California, I've seen accounts of people who impersonated members of the clergy charged with false impersonation, which should be distinguished from lawful impersonation, meaning what an actor on a film set might do when playing the role of a priest in a film or television show. But otherwise, it is illegal in most places to impersonate the, uh, being a member of the clergy, especially for the commission of another crime. Nowhere do the articles say that the fake priest has been arrested or that a warrant is out for his arrest, though... I imagine that's the case here, and I suspect further investigations into this crime are probably hinging on that. Now, I know that on the subject of impersonating the clergy, many will ask if those costume people calling themselves nuns at the baseball game would be covered by this law. And the, the answer is, unfortunately, no. They have never claimed to be Catholic nuns recognized by the Catholic Church or having any Catholic identity, and clearly by their appearance, they make no such claim. 
their situation would likely be covered under First Amendment constitutional protections for free political speech, since they could easily make the argument, and probably have, that they are engaged in a protest against the church's teachings about the sins that they hold so dear, those sins that cry out to heaven for justice. In America, that is their legal right. Though, again, that is not the church's historic position, which is why it's so curious that the only bishop to really do anything about them was Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas, who now faces punishment by the Vatican for publicly defending the faith, though I doubt his actions at the baseball game will factor in much with that story. Now, it is worth noting, though, with that baseball story, again, that the USCCB did issue a generally positive but kind of middling statement on the matter. But on an impersonation, this isn't an isolated problem. Simple Google searches reveal that this sort of thing has happened pretty frequently over the past few years and has involved even people impersonating Anglican bishops in the UK or people impersonating priests in the US with the goal of swindling real priests into thinking that they're helping fund a bulk trip to visit the Pope in Rome for any priest who participates in their fundraising efforts and all sorts of other related kind of issues. Rarely do these crimes get resolved because these are identity theft problems, which is just hard to investigate and prosecute in general. Now, in the unlikely event that you find yourself confronted by someone claiming to be a priest in an unusual situation that makes you uncomfortable and might appear to be shady, ask that person what diocese that they as a priest are incarnated in. Ask him who his bishop is, what parish he serves, or if he works in the chancery office. Ask questions. The more questions you ask about his identity, the more likely you'll be able to figure out if he's a real priest or if he's a scammer. Make sure to ask about their credentials as a priest. And this goes for priests who get phone calls or emails asking for donations for trips to meet the Pope, like the story I alluded to, or someone calls you claiming to be raising money for the Coalition for Cancelled Priests. If, a, if, if there's a real fundraiser going on, your bishop's likely to know about it. Be vigilant because it is a crime to impersonate members of the clergy in pretty much every state. The reality, though, is that most states don't make it a high priority to find people who impersonate the clergy. That's just the sad reality. Maybe when this country has its inevitable post-chastisement conversion to the faith on a mass scale, that'll change. But not on this side of apocalyptic events. But what do you think of this story? Are you surprised that people are impersonating priests and hiring fake priests to intimidate their employees, especially when their status is less than legal? When there's a large number of former Catholics of the general groups that we're talking about here in this video. Are you surprised that this is happening? Or is it just another sad sign of the times? Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Instead of sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.